I never have guessed. But, oh my god, oh dude, this is mustard. <laughs> this is Hi, mustard. This is Senor uh, Blanco, Ron's dog. Wow, Ron's at the dentist. He doesn't like this. He's actually your nephew. <sighs> He's kind of my nephew. Ooh. Ooh, and he hates the cat. You hate the cats, don't you? You hate the cats. So, um, anyway, he just wanted to say hi. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Go. Go, little man. Termite! That was our one guest annually. <laughs> he played out the guest card. There he is. Wow, he, he, uh, he smells like the bus. Yeah, he smells like a bus. He smells like a tour bus. He smells like smoke and... Tour bus. Oh, Wow. Yeah, dang, I need to wash my hand. I didn't smell him that bad. I guess I didn't touch his belly. Yeah. It's, it's his stomach. Yeah. Poor guy, and he's got to sleep with Ron. <laughs> it's just a beast of a... They're both sweaty beasts. But it's not your fault, is it, Mustard? No. 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 It's his fault. It's all his fault. He's ignoring me now. Anyway, termites, fire, 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 fire. So much stuff to go over. 81. Episode 81. Isn't that exciting? My lighter's... So many things. Um, where to even start? Well, this past, um, the past weekend was um, so much fun because we went to Charlottesville and Virginia Beach, and I got to go to Monticello, which, by the way, if you ever go there, there's an air alcohol consum- consumption area. I took a video of it, <laughs> but it's out back. But there is a very cute little like uh, soda snack shop, but they do have beer. And I, this one's not open because I'm going to save it, but I drank this one. This is my recommendation if you go to Monticello. Get the full Nelson Virginia Pale Ale. Now, I wouldn't have a bunch of them. Pretty, It was delicious, but it's not like a, a Bud Light or something. It's just it's a little thicker. Wonderful, wonderful thing. And the tour was great, although I was on it with all these high school people. The questions... I thought everybody knew about Sally Hemings, that Thomas Jefferson had a slave named Sally Hemings, that he had a bunch of kids with, not just one kid, a bunch of kids. And the girl kept going, wait, she was black? Yes. (laughs) Yes, most slaves at the time were black. Uh, Wait, and he had kids with her, and then they had to live outside? Well, yes, they were inside a slave quarter, but yes, it was horrible. But yet, the questions, I don't know how the tour guide halfway through didn't quit but then again it's so amusing um wow and i didn't i didn't get my ticket in time to see the dome room but then they told it then they tell you on the tour oh that's just a storage area well why was i gonna pay 50 extra bucks to go see your fucking attic right i didn't but i got the slave tour and you get the house tour and you know it's weird because people they try to say well everybody had slaves back then john adams didn't He was firmly against it. Same era, same money, same everything. No, not everybody did. So let's not let him off the hook for that. Now, on the other hand, he was a genius. He could read in seven languages. I'm like, how did we go from that (laughs) to, well, you know, some people that have become president. Yeah, I mean, we had geniuses back then. I think, like, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, these people were... They invented shit. They could speak a hundred languages, blah, 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 blah. I just think our geniuses aren't in politics anymore. That's all I can figure out. But then is it Elon Musk? I don't know. Ron met him, said he's weird as shit. Yeah, but he's a genius. He's a genius in one thing, though, like science and math and stuff. No, but Thomas Jefferson and uh, what's-his-face were all over. They had all of it. Math, science. uh, Elon's got money. Well, that's true. Mm-hmm. Plus, back then, I don't know that you had to go to school the whole time. I think you could just hang out with a lawyer and you became one. It's my dad's <laughs> theory. <laughs> what am I eating? I'm eating an Utz potato chip. These are from the Northeast. Well, Hanover, Pennsylvania. A termite brought me this beer, which I'm trying. Um, what's in the box, it's called. It's from Fort Monroe, Virginia. Delicious. Fun. Yeah, good. That termite was um, um, Steph. Thank you, Steph. Um, and the Carolina treat, which I haven't opened because I want to save it for summer. It's a Carolina treat. It, it's like the um, cooking barbecue sauce, but the more the Carolina kind, not the the red kind. Yeah, this is more vinegary, which is delicious. So thank you, Termite Steph. I did get that backstage. 
Uh, somebody brought me a lot of potato chips backstage. I can't. Was it? Well, there was some kind of. What was in there that Aaron ate the whole bag? The chips you have Really? I thought it was something else. I gave it to the opening act. <laughs> the next night, he said he ate the whole bag in bed. I'm like, what are you, five? Who does that? But that's why I gave him to Aaron. I'm, I mean, I taste them, but then I'm afraid. I'm like, he's probably got more discipline than me. Turns out, not at all. Um, the shows were super fun. Charlottesville, adorable. I know it got a bad publicity because of the thing, but if you put that aside and go, it's a wonderful little town. And Virginia Beach has kind of a Florida flair. But that's also, Virginia is an underrated state. Virginia's got so much shit to do, so much outdoor stuff. Then you can go to the beach, you can go to the, the mountains. It's just, um, it's an underrated, well, at least they don't tell the Midwest people about it. Maybe people on the East Coast rate it super highly, but in the Midwest, we're never really said, we're never really told, hey, why don't you go for, to Virginia for a week? Right. Would never enter my mind. Well, I would now because I travel, but um, the it's... There's so much history. And then, sadly, James Monroe's house is only two miles away from Thomas Jefferson's house. But I'm like, well, that's what happens when you're a middle act and you build your house too close to a headliner. <laughs> Nobody wants to go. I, I wanted to go, but you don't have time. After you spend all the time, because the grounds at Monticello, you're up on this giant mountain. You can see the University of Virginia. You can see the whole town. It's so awesome. You spend too much time up there, and then... There's no time to go to Jimmy Monroe's house, poor guy. Next time. Next time I work Charlottesville, that's what I'm doing. And then I was going to go to Jamestown, but the bomb cyclone hit, and it was um, sleeting sideways with 45-mile-an-hour winds, and I thought, not a good idea to be outside today in the nation's first settlement. And there's not much there from what I can tell. There's, like, a few little monuments. But I thought it would be cool, but alas, not doing it in 45-mile-an-hour winds. <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 oh, bad, there's a dog, he, here's what Mustard hates, he hates animals on commercial, and he hates any white lady that skips, there's a lady that skips in some commercial, he totally hates her, settle down now, we're trying to do a live show here, yeah, oh, he's growling at it, he hates the blonde, was it a dog or a blonde, he hates blonde women, all right, yeah, simmer down. Oh, okay. it was a Cleveland Browns. He hates the Browns. Oh, he hates the Browns. He hates the Cleveland Browns? Oh, oh don't do that. They have enough problems. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need a dog hating them, too. God dang, and I think they're going to trade. Oh, speaking of this football, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy came back. I love it. Tom Brady is unretired. He spent, oh, what, two weeks with his wife and children and decided he'd rather have a 350-pound man. Chase Just him and throw him to the ground. <laughs> Just jump on him. I didn't think he'd come out of retirement, but my look at my fantasy team, we are going to get Tommy again. Which one's Tom? This one? Yep. Yeah. That's Betty White. Uh, that's Betty White. What a nice couple they'd make. Um, <laughs> how exciting is that? I don't, I don't think he's going to win the eighth one. I know people, the t truth, I'm only a Tom fan because of my fantasy team. I don't care otherwise, but. I don't think he can. When you see how fast the younger people are, Mahomes and Joe Burrow and Herbert, and Tom kind of looks like I'm watching a uh, quarterback from the 90s. Yeah. Drop back, one, two, three, pass. Now, he passes great. I'd still take him, but mm, he's a little, he's getting old, yeah. aren't we all? But I'm not trying to play professional football. Um, all right, so that's what we're drinking Oh, no. Um, these potato chips are too good. I'm going to eat too many of them, so we're getting rid of those. Those are uts. Um, look what ranch is making now. Hidden Valley Ranch Seasoning Spicy. Let's taste it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to eat it with my finger because I don't know what you're supposed to. Oh, you're supposed to put it on wings. Oh, well, they're just telling you how to make ranch spicy wings. I don't know. what. Maybe. I don't know about that. No. Holy shit. No. 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 Firm no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. The ranch seasoning's okay, but the spicy, god dang it, now I ruined my cracker. 
How about Brianna? Everybody knows this dressing, right? It's in every grocery store. This is homestyle Chipotle ranch dressing. I'm not a big Chipotle person, but I'm doing the work of the Lord. I bought it so I can taste it. God, that spice. My God. That was terrible. That's good. It kind of tastes like Italian dressing. Yeah. Huh. I like it, though. Okay. Made with smoked jalapeno peppers. Mild. It's not hot. It's just spicy. Okay. It's good. I don't know what you would use it for, but salad. Yeah, kind of vinegary. Good enough. I like it. A plus. Well done. Um, a few termite things. I got this from Karen. Promised me this a long time ago. She loves story time, and she has sent me the mama and the papa's, the Papa John. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's an old book, too. Crazy old pictures. So shout out to Termite Karen. I will read this after I read my Andrew Jackson book. Because, by the way, I went to the Hermitage before I went to uh, Monticello. Uh And because the little lake place I have in Nashville is very close to the Hermitage, and I drive by it frequently and I always think I always wait for my dad because I'm like well if they come through and I happen to be here and not in the Ozarks he'll want to go but then every time they cruise through here they're like we have to get up at five and go to Florida they get up like at four in the morning they're like the Von Trapps I don't even know when they left and I'm like well I guess nobody's gonna go so um a friend of mine had relatives in town and was thinking of something to do and I tricked them and said hermitage well they were already going anyway but I was like can I go too um, but when you see Andrew Jackson's house, com- which, by the way, on the front of it, it says Andrew Jackson, the people's president. And I'm like, probably not if you were one of the 800 people he owned. Right. Just saying. I know what they said, because he was the first one to get people to vote if you didn't own. Before that, you had to own land to vote. But the- all of this only applied to white dudes. Like, it didn't apply to women or anybody else. But his house, now he does have, like, 1,500 awesome acres but it's kind of a hillbilly parade compared to thomas jefferson's really? i'm like yeah tennessee got the hillbilly and his house which is now 15 minutes from downtown Nashville, mm-hmm. back in the day was three hours away wow. thomas jefferson was not easy to get to either no. um and going up that hill i mean i uh yeah well i can't even imagine a horse and carriage i can imagine a horse but okay. if you're his wife and you're in one of those fancy things. I don't know. It just seems like. But the Hermitage is great. I mean, it was a good tour. And the tour guide was good. Both tour guides were good. The tour guides, because sometimes they're too cheesy. Yeah. Or they try to be funny. Or, or, or. Both of them I had at both places were good. But it is funny to see. This is how Andrew Jackson, he thought this was a really bitchin' house. <laughs> and yeah. uh, Tommy's got you clocked by a million. Thomas, Tom, Thomas Jefferson had a dumbwaiter. But he invented all this shit for himself that would shoot wine bottles um, from wherever um, right up to the dinner table. Awesome. It was right behind him by a fireplace. He would just. Vacuum. Huh? Vacuum, right? Yeah, he had a vacuum. He had a lot of shit he invented that that was what they would do when guests came over. Sure. It was like show and tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look what I did. Look what I did. Do you have dirt on your floor? Let me help you. <laughs> then he turns on this contra- contraption. I mean, it wasn't like a, a Hoover vacuum. It was like a light bulbs that were sucking air. I don't know. I, I couldn't do it now. And we already have vacuums. Um, that was uh, something to see. Now it's my goal to see all the president's houses. I've never even been to Harry Truman's. And I'm from Missouri. Really? Yeah. Why didn't we get taken there in grade school? As a field trip, yeah. Kansas City is too far from St. Louis for that. They're not dragging our asses four hours down Highway 70. They took us down to the brewery or the arch. Those are our two things. Some um, drink now, speaking of Pittsburgh, I wasn't speaking of Pittsburgh, but yeah. I know. But I have this pickle. Look at this stained glass pickle. People, it's beautiful. This is from a Pittsburgh termite, but because I was texting my friend Bill Crawford, He's a comedian, and he's on the morning radio in Pittsburgh. Uh-huh. We're both big football people, fantasy football and all they that. Got they got Trubisky. <laughs> and I just wrote, oh, God, that's mm-hmm. not what Pittsburgh was hoping for. No. And I know because there was a meme going around with Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. 
in a Steelers uniform, and I'm like, wow, wouldn't that be great? No. Trubisky. I don't know. My friend Tommy says that he hadn't been given a proper opportunity. I don't know. That's enough sports talk, but Pittsburgh, it made me think of it. Um, this lady's penmanship is gorgeous. It looks like another language. It's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty like a dill. She makes these. Um, uh, last few years, uh, I've been nervous. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, she literally likes podcasts. That's great. Uh, this is a pickle forever. I make a lot of weird glass things, but I'm known for the pickles. Yeah. That's cool. But now I can't find her name. F- One Fly Chicken Creations. Well, I know that part. We'll find it. Yeah. So shout out to that termite and and stickers, which are great because if I don't use them, then my nieces will steal them immediately. Yeah, yeah. the stickers. This is really cool though. Lewis's dad used to do stained glass. That was his thing. Yeah, I mean not for a living. He was a map person for the government, but then he decided he wanted to do that in old age. Good for you. Good for you, Sam Black. Good for you. Um, this is uh. Wait. Oh, I don't, I'm getting confused now. I don't know. I've got too many things on my desk. We did that. All right. Now, so many things. Now that that business is all taken care of. First of all, well, I'm going to talk like Anna Dalvey for a minute. Is that okay with you? Is that okay? Yes. It's okay. I, I love, I do have the article up here. It's pretty good. I called my sister yesterday. I'm like, it's me, Anna. We talk to each other like that. Hers is pretty good, too, I must admit. She's like, oh, hi, Anna, what are you doing? I go, did you hear been deported? <laughs> <laughs> it's yesterday it came out. She was being deported and put on a plane to Frankfurt. If you don't know who Anna is, Inventing Anna on uh, Netflix with uh, the lady who plays Rose from Ozark, who's so Julia. goddamn good. Julia mm-hmm. something. She's so great. Um, I'm going to make Ron watch that tonight. I made him watch The Gilded Age. But Ron's... Just girly enough that he liked it. It's like Downton Abbey yeah, and Christine Baranski and uh, oh, who, Cynthia Nixon is so, they're both so, so, so good. It's just about rich people in the early 1900s and it's really about the their outfits because everything they come out in, I'm like, holy shit, look at that one. And then they walk around in the daytime like it's normal that, that your husband would just come down for eggs in a tuxedo. <laughs> Hello. 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 Um, <laughs> So I made him watch The Gilded Age because he's been here for a couple nights. And now I'm going to make him watch uh, Inventing Anna because he hasn't seen it. Anyway, uh, Anna, uh, the Julia who plays her in the, in the show, came up with this really weird accent. Uh, it's almost like, I don't know. And Anna really does sound like that. It's this mismatch of like a Russian, German, British, American accent that just comes out awkward and bizarre. But anyway... Uh, Anna, um, supposed to be, was supposed to be deported yesterday. Mm-hmm. They went and got her. They, quote, freed her. Well, let me see if I, I may not have brought the actual story up. I don't think I did, but I, I read them like 10 times, so I already know exactly what I meant, uh, what happened. So they said, you're being deported. You're getting on a, and the whole, all of the, the press showed up at Frankfurt waiting on that flight. Mm-hmm. She wasn't on it. Once again, I have I have avoided justice, <laughs> and I am not part of the system. I'm special. Yeah. Um, somehow her lawyers found a loophole in the ICE deportation bullshit, and she's still here as of today. But that appeal runs out on March 18th, so the, by the time you hear this, Anna may be already gone back to Germany. The party is over. Well, you know what you shouldn't do, Anna? Um, you shouldn't shit talk ice on Instagram if you don't want to get deported. Apparently, they were following all of her social media, and she was posting terrible things. And even if it's true, even if the ice deportation center is worse than Rikers, no need to say that if you want something from these people. Just be a good termite and shut your termite mouth, and maybe they'll let you stay. Yes, but maybe not. Maybe you'll go back to Germany with no money. Mm-hmm. So. There you have it. Um, I'm going to save that one for next week. That's a term I think. Let's go straight, though, to... Oh, this is my Japanese killing stuff. Oh, my God. So many things. Um, 
We will know. We will see by the next podcast if Anna has been deported or not. Okay. I don't understand why she got to stay in the first place. I mean, she's overrun her visa by like seven years or some bull. I'm making that up, but a lot by a lot. Here's part of my act. This is what I was looking for all last week. It was in the podcast notebook. God damn it. <laughs> um. Oh, this was the hurricane. Oh yeah, this lady gave me recipes for uh. Dip. Thank you, termite. Okay. It's hard for me to not talk like Anna. I want to do it all day. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's so mean. You know, paddles. I don't know. You sit there and you act like you work hard, but you don't. No. Like she just says mean shit She's like awful. that. Yes. All right. Dolly. Where's she at? Queen Dolly. It's a queen update. It's a queen update. Yeah. But it's not an update. It's just queen news. We save updates for updates. Queen Dolly. Tennessee treasurer and international icon Dolly Parton has removed herself from the class of 2022 nominees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, good girl. Well, Making a statement. I have yet to, un my friend Dax is the drummer for Cheap Trick, mm -hmm. and he and I were texting about this. If it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. every year there's people that come up, I'm like, well, that's not real. Rock and roll. I mean, I don't care, but it ain't my dog or my fight. But why not call it the Music Hall of Fame right. if we're putting everybody in it? Mm -hmm. Like, there's just people where you're like, well. Because, like, Cheap Trick wouldn't go in the country music. Well, right. Cheap right. Trick would not be yeah. in the country. And that year, they were not, the one year they were nominated, it was with NWA, who are <laughs> rappers, and they couldn't really be more different. Cheap Trick, NWA. Both good, but nobody ever, I don't think to my knowledge, anybody else has ever said, take me out of the running. No. Stevie's the only woman, the only one I think that's been in. Queen Stevie is in as a solo artist and with a band. Yep. I don't know that any other women accomplished that. Dax, but Dax likes Dolly. Dax loves Dolly. Yeah. But it's like, how far is this definition going? But here's what she said. Dolly here. She posted this <laughs> on social media. <laughs> Even though I'm extremely flattered and grateful to be nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I just don't feel I've earned that right. I really do not want votes to be split because of me, so I must respectfully bow out. I do hope the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame will understand, be willing to consider me again if I'm ever worthy. This has inspired me to hopefully put out a great rock and roll album at some point in the future, which I've always wanted to do. My husband is a total rock and roll freak and has always encouraged me to do so. I wish all the nominees good luck and thank you again for the compliment. Rock on. Cleveland-based Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced Dami. Uh, here's the other, with other 16 other artists. So there's 17 total nominees. The list includes Eminem. See? No, yeah. I mean, Lionel Richie. Pop. Well, I mean, he's great, but it's pop. Rocky, it's Duran Duran. Stop it. <laughs> Hungry like a wolf. <laughs> Pat Benatar. Yes. Rock. Carly Simon. Uh, pop. It goes on. And Judas Priest? Yes. Rock. Right. Yeah. Eurythmics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little more pop leaning, but there's a shitload. The New York Dolls, Rage Against the Machine, and Dion Warwick. <laughs> Do you know the way to sign those that? I like Dion Warwick, too. And she's one of the funniest people on Twitter. One of the funniest. I mean, if not, probably in my top ten. But... I think they've just expanded the definition. I don't yeah. think it's rock and roll anymore. No. no. It's rock and roll influenced sometimes. Yeah, but anybody could say they're rock and roll influenced, I think. Right. Don't you, music-wise? Yeah. Um, that's all the Queen updates. Tanya's out on the road. Shaka's out on the road, too. You should go to her web. She's doing. She does a lot of festival stuff. Be good. I saw something. Fest. Yeah, and I saw something in Virginia in the entertainment magazine newspaper deal or I saw an ad for her doing something but I didn't really pay attention to what and Cher's been having personal problems I saw it on Twitter she wrote that she's been having personal problems I don't know and everybody all the um her followers are very worried as I would be but let's not forget these people are getting I google how old Cher is I bet she's 74 that's my guess two same age as Stevie 75 May 20th May 20th should be 76. Shit, dogs. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. She's the same age as Dolly. Her and Dolly are the same age? Yep. She just turned 
Tina Turner's older. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tina Turner. Tina Turner's over in Switzerland somewhere, I believe, mm-hmm. with that man. Um, update! <sighs> this is about that guy, the attorney general in South Dakota. Remember that? Guy, the man who ran over the person and said he thought he hit a deer, but there were eyeglasses in the backseat of his right. car that belonged to the dead person. So somebody's face came through your windshield, and you're like, no, 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 it could have been a deer. Uh, a deer that looked a lot like a guy named Joe. It was 55. So he hit and killed Joe Bover. 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 I don't know. 55-year-old guy. He received a text from one of his buddies saying, well, at least the guy was a Democrat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, okay. A study of text messages between the adjour- attorney general and advisors and staff member revealed disparaging and offensive statements regarding other law enforcement officers as well. Judges, a Supreme Court justice, a legislator, prosecutors, staff members, former attorney general, and a United States senator. Senator, and that. I mean, what is the matter with you that you can kill somebody and you're still, killed them? Yeah. And you still think it's funny? Politics. Yeah. yeah, and he wasn't like a politician. This guy just voted Democrat once or registered as a Democrat. He was just a person. Um, they're trying to apply pressure in an effort to remove him, and they should. I mean, he's, he, there's so much wrong with his story. There's so much wrong with all of it, and he doesn't seem to give a shit at all. Um, the relatives are pissed. They're like, it doesn't surprise me, but it rubs us the wrong way. And then the other, somebody else was like, he was just a voter, meaning he's not like your Democratic opponent in r- running for office. Like, he's just a dude walking on the street. Yeah, so there's a little update. We'll see if they ever get, we'll, I'll, I'll follow this to see if they can remove him as they should. Um, another update! This is crazy. You know I keep up with the traders. Yep. January 6th, the little uh, insurrection riot. Idaho man gets four years in prison. This guy I remember, because I watched every minute of it, because I couldn't believe it was happening. And I just happened to have CNN on or mm-hmm. whatever. And then I called my friend Chuck. I'm like, dude, because he was out in California. Mm-hmm. So he's behind. It was early there. I'm like, you need to wake up. There's f- These idiots are attacking my favorite was when they were using ropes and crampons to scale the walls of the Capitol, but the steps were available. Yeah. They, they wanted the drama. Like, you don't have to do that. You could just walk. The cops weren't doing it. Anyway, an Idaho man who hit a police officer with a pot, pipe as part of the mob that stormed the castle was sentenced to more than four years in a federal prison. Good. Right. Because they're the ones that say we're in the favor of uh, the, the, the boys in blue or whatever they call the cops. Something uh, blue. The people. Back the blue. Duke Edward, he's 68. A 68-year logger from the small city of Nampa told the judge that he didn't remember many of his actions. Oh, well, that's cool because we have him on tape. Let's just rewind the tape and we can... I remember this guy because I remember thinking, look at, like, I'm a lot, lot younger than this man and I wouldn't have this kind of energy. I remember seeing this guy because he hit a cop with a, a baton and I'm like, you're on film! Holy Christ, and he didn't have a mask on. I mean, at least he's not a chicken shit compared to half of them with their mask and shit on. Um, He attacked at least three officers in the tunnel on 2021. Um, He said it was something stupid he did, but he he doesn't seem very remorseful. I think he's just pissed he got sentenced. Um, But then, then the guys that he hit, the one guy can't lift his arm above his shoulder ever again. Like, he went crazy. Yeah. yeah. He was charged a set of doors in a tunnel and prevented officers from closing. And then he tried to rain blows on the officers using a thin PCV pipe that he apparently found on the ground. The one guy, one cop, tried to block the pipe from hitting a fellow officer who had no helmet on. Both my hands were bleeding from blocking. He insisted continue to fight me to prevent us from closing the door that would enable him and fellow insurrectionists to advance in the tunnel and the Capitol, as members of Congress and the Senate, were being evacuated from the very same route. There was that one cop who turned Mitt Romney around in mid-stride. Mitt Romney was heading one way, and this cop was like, Bleh! and he turned him around like a, a crash t- dummy and just sent him the other way. But, wow. I mean, Mitt Romney trusted the guy, and he, he was right. Um, 
He characterized his uh, actions differently. He said he didn't remember the most aggressive of his actions, but acknowledged that he committed them based on videos. Yes, people. Yes. As my friend Heidi from Saxon, Missouri would say, yes. 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 There's video. <laughs> God damn. Really. I do, you know what? I sometimes think the people, this guy's almost 70. I don't think they think of that. No. I am hyper aware. And I'm old, too. I'm not one of the children. But I am hyper aware that no matter where you are, if you are outside of your home, you are probably on camera. Not that I've ever felt the need to do anything wackadoodle. Um, but the fact that it wouldn't... And all of those guys are filming it themselves. The insurrectionist people are all filming shit. Like, oh, my God. I just... People, people, people. To be on Facebook. Yeah, it's, I don't know what, I don't know what it was. A lot of it, when you keep reading it, it's boredom. And they want to be doing something. And they really believed that all these things they were being told. And, you know, let's get on down there. (laughs) As Larry the Cable Guy, my little pal would say, get her done. Holy shit, they found it. I don't have many updates. Moving on. And we are moving on. I don't even have a tiny update. I don't have any tiny updates. Mustard, Mustard yeah. Shadow of the leader. <laughs> I'm just saying, yes, he has gas. And he sleeps like, God, I don't even know, 20 oh. hours a day. He'll play catch with me twice. That's it. We've done it three days in a row. I pick up, it's a rope with a ball on it. He brings it over. I throw it. He gets it, throw it, gets it, and then he leaves. Done. Twice. <laughs> He's so lazy. He'll get his game on, though. Unfortunately, not to chase geese. I was hoping he'd do that. He won't. The cats. Mm, He hasn't seen the fox. There's no rabbits out. They're out by the boat trailer. He he won't go that far. He's too lazy to walk that far. And he's a prince. He wants to walk on concrete or mulch. He doesn't want to walk on grass. Anyway, speaking of other things, I keep meaning to talk about before I do Holy Shit, They Found It. What are we watching? Now, I... Took, had to get out of my normal watching because I have house guests and he hasn't, I had to go. I don't. The Grand Termite's here. The Grand Termite is here. Mm-hmm. He's at the dentist because <laughs> his, his teeth have fallen out. I'm like, God, we're getting old. He's older than me though, so. Yeah, you got a little time. Yeah, I have a little time before all my teeth start literally falling out of his head like a goat. I'm like, your mom. Like, I didn't, you're like babies. It's going backwards. And he was moving it. It's really loose. I'm like, ah, oh, it looks like a kid before. It, oh. he, he still has a good smile. Though. Well, like he says, they're not real. Of course he has a nice smile. Of course they're white. <laughs> they're all caps and veneers. I don't even know the difference between a crown and a veneer. I don't even know what the difference is. Um, the dropout. We have to talk about Elizabeth Holmes okay. and Amanda Seafried, I never say it right. Seafried, Seafried, I don't know. I met her once at the Tonight Show. She's very nice. Seems like a very normal uh, person, even for being like a Hollywood star person. Um, she is great. Uh-huh. Although it fe- I feel like they put some prosthetic in her bottom jaw. Like she talks kind of weirdly. She did the voice really good, and she does the eyes, the psycho eyes, great. She's a great, great actor. And I think everybody in it is pretty good. But something feels off. I told my friend Lorene, and Lorene does direct and has produced TV, many, many, many TV shows. She agreed. But I don't understand. I don't know. I told Lewis to watch it. He's better at that stuff. What is the problem? I feel like I'm watching a movie of the week on TV back in the day. Yeah. I don't, there's something, I don't know if it's the way it's shot. I don't know. But it's delicious viewing, and she's great. So it's definitely worth it. But now I'm looking forward to the Jennifer Lawrence one. Yeah. I think that's going to be a movie. Be There's something, I don't know. It might be because Amanda's very small. Very well, short. She's very short. How tall is Elizabeth? As am I. Google it. I think she's tall. I just pictured her to be more of an imposing figure, meaning tall to short people. 5'7". Five, 5'7". Seven. Five, seven. I, I Google Amanda. Amanda. She's 5'3"? Huh. I thought she was more like my height, which is like 3'8". Kate McKinnon is 5'3". Kate McKinnon is 5'3". Look at all the shoddies, shoddies, shoddies. You never cared about that. Notable short people. Notable short people. I'm in one of those. Yeah, you are. 
not too far away from Stevie. And I'm like, how do they know how tall I am? It's oh, probably yes. on Wikipedia. You're after Kate McKinnon. I'm after Kate McKinnon? What does it say? How tall I am? 5'1". I wish I was still 5'1". one. <laughs> at one point, I was 5'1 and a half at my peak. You're getting more it, popular. You're a notable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm notable. Uh, okay. Holy shit, they found it. Moving on. So I'm recommending the dropout. I'm recommending the Gilded Age. And the new Vikings, Lewis says it. They all look too clean. I like the old Vikings where they look dirty. I'm like, I know their teeth are weird. I, but I love it. The new Vikings, still great. It's Leif yeah. Erikson and forward, still great. And... What else? There's something else that I've been binging. Well, Inventing Anna, if you haven't seen it, Dropout, Gilded Age. But you got to be, you got to like Downton Abbey to like the Gilded Age. So if you hate Downton Abbey, do not even turn it on because you will hate it. I know, I haven't been home. I know, I have to sit here and watch. He, yeah. He's tired. He had a lot of shows. He was in Nashville, and then they tried to leave Nashville, and it was snowing, and they had to fly on, and they flew up to Pittsburgh, and he did. Ron's a monster. He does, like, two shows a night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why he's got to retire. That's what he said. He goes, because I said, oh, I'm gonna, he goes, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, I'm going to do another special, and this one's an Amazon original. He goes, why? You're selling out shows. Don't do that. You'll end up being me. You'll, <laughs> you'll have two shows a night. You do not want to be that popular. I'm like... Dude, there's control over these situations. You don't have to do two shows a night. You just have spent so much goddamn money in your life that now you have to do two shows and you want to make your money to retire. I said, this lady, I, I live a normal expenditure life. I don't have a jet. I don't have a tour bus. I don't have Tater Air and two pilots and so on and so forth. I have a 2007 Mercury Mariner and I rent from Avis and I'm a wizard. There you go. I'd say percentage-wise, if you did the math, I make more than him only doing one show. Right. Percentage, gross, net. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mustard, I don't fly you around, do I? No, I don't have a dog I fly around. Anyway, holy shit, they found it. Once thought to be lost forever, a 130-year-old shipwreck of the ship Atlanta has been discovered at the bottom of Lake Superior. There's a lot of shit in the Great Lakes that is there for the finding if you have the money, the resources, and you don't mind the cold. Located, thir located 35 miles off Deer Park, Michigan, the wonderfully preserved shipwreck lies in the murky depths 650 feet below the lake's surface, according to the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society, which announced its discovery Thursday. It's a 172-foot schooner barge after using sonar in partnership with so-and-so to map out more than 2,500 miles of Lake Superior. They searched 2,500 miles in the summer of 2021, and they found it. It's just amazing. It would be so exciting. Carrying a load of coal, the Atlanta sank during a storm on May 4th, 1891, while being towed by the steamer Wilhelm. Caught in a northwest gale, not only did the tow line snap, oh, no, oh, no. but so did the Atlanta sails, oh, no. No, this is in 1881, which left it at the mercy of the storm. The seven-member crew loaded onto a lifeboat and paddled for hours until arriving at Crisp Point Life Saving Station while attempting to land the boat near the station. Oh, no, it overturned and only two members made it safely to shore. That sucks. They were already there. Seven of them. The detailed accounts of the wreck come from survivor's testimony recorded by the U.S. Life Serving Service. The organization eventually became the U.S. Coast Guard. I did not know that. So that's pretty cool. I don't know how we're going to see more pictures of that, but we'll try and find it. Um, this is another, this is a little hard. I know how you like that battle. So. I don't mind. Archaeologists unearth a lost golden city in Egypt. The Luxor finding has been called the second most archaeological discovery since King Tut's tomb. Cool. It's amazing how much stuff is in Egypt that they keep finding. Like, that would be just a fascinating job i probably boring a lot but but when you hit it's like hitting a yeah. slot machine yeah it's a big hit um egyptian archaeologist uh, has unearthed what some describe as an industrial royal metropolis just north of modern day luxor which incorporates what once was the ancient egyptian city of thebes aka waset the archaeologist dubbed the site the golden city 
T H E B E S. I don't know. I didn't pay attention. Well, I had a I had Egyptian history in high school, and I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't pay enough attention. Yeah. Put it on the pile, right? Uh, dubbed the site the Loden, Gold, Lost Golden City of Luxor, and they believe it may have been devoted to manufacturing decorative artifacts, furniture, and pottery, among other items. Hieroglyphics instru- inscriptions on the clay caps of wine vessels uh, at the site date to the city to the reign of 18th century dynasty. Amenhopt. Okay. Probably saying that wrong, too. Amenhopt. Yeah, but uh, I d- it gets very hard after that. But just know, <laughs> okay. I tried. If it gets too hard for me, I go with the termites. Well, they're not going to want to hear it either because I can't even be bothered to read it all. But it's very cool. They've unearthed the whole city. I think it's cool. And then how many cities have been very... Oh, the dog has fallen asleep. That's not a good sign for no, this podcast. too hard. You Mustard. He don't care. He acts like he didn't go to bed last night. He slept 16 hours. Okay, we're moving on to news. Well, my friend Bronson sent me this one. A two-carat diamond was made by Hidden Valley Ranch, and you can bid to buy it. No. Now they're making diamonds. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. If you're thinking of proposing, Hidden Valley Ranch is truly a one-of-a-kind ring that can spice up your plans. I wonder if you can eat it. Hidden Valley Ranch said it, enga- it engaged a professional diamond maker to create the two-carat brilliant cut diamond ring in a lab by heating Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning, this stuff that I moved over there, probably not the spicy, the regular. Um, uh, they heated up Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning to 2,500 degrees and then crushing the output beneath 400 tons of pressure, taking five months total to create this ring. After wow. being polished to perfection... The eye-catching diamond was then set in a 14-carat white gold band with HVR, LVR engraved on the side. Hidden Valley Ranch. What's LVR? Lost Valley Ranch. I don't know. Last year, when one of our customers, when one of our custom Valentine's Day bottles was used in a marriage proposal, we were inspired, said Deb Crandall, marketing director at Hidden Valley Ranch. We saw a love of ranch become part of one's life's most beautiful moments. Those teenagers that stayed at the, at my house, I guarantee you, they're going to have a ranch fountain at their wedding. Totally. Yeah, now they could get ranch diamonds and eat them and dip them in the goddamn <laughs> ranch fountain. It made us mon- it made us wonder, how can we make this act of love even more memorable? Today through March 17th, so it'll be over by the time you guys hear this. You could have bid on the diamond. The winner will receive the ring just in time for National Proposal Day on March 20th. Oh. Oh, the auction is on eBay. And at this point, see what it is. At this point, the highest bid is $1,825. Let's see if it's gone up. Bidding started at 310 in honor of National Ranch Day on March 10th, but a two-carat diamond ring made of ranch is truly pricey, priceless. All proceeds will benefit Feeding America, and every dollar will be raised to help provide at least 10 meals. Can you, did you 12500 Shut up. It's up to 12000 mm-hmm. Well, or you can get some ranch crocs for 150. Or ranch crocs for 150. <laughs> <laughs> Go for you. Um, moving on, Tennessee. Uh-huh. Every time, by the way, if I'm in the car with my mom and dad, and it says, and I know you shouldn't be supporting these things, but now we just do it to fuck with my mom. Mm-hmm. If it says like petting zoo and they show pictures of exotic animals me and my dad are always like yeah let's go let's do it come on we're pulling over and my mom go 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 crazy we are not going in there these hillbillies don't have control over these animals there's something wrong with you and your father and he'll get off on the exit on purpose and like drive up to the entrance until she just strokes out in the car she gets so angry um and I mean, me and my dad would go, except I don't know that you should be supported. It's a whole other argument that we're not going to get into. But Tennessee, uh-huh. two men killed by a camel that escaped from a Tennessee petting zoo. Camel? A camel. Come on. I never pictured him as violent. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a rampaging camel, camel escaped from a petting zoo in Tennessee. Bobby Metheny, 42, and Tommy Gunn, 67, both from the Volunteer State, that's Tennessee, Mm -hmm. died after they were cornered and attacked by the frenzied camel Thursday in Obion, roughly 100 miles northeast of Memphis. I'm trying to picture. 
northeast. Oh, I probably go near there when I do my cut through Missouri. Yeah. The hump beast was reportedly killed by law enforcement officers. Uh, they got a call about a loose camel attack. The cops got a call about a loose camel attacking people near Shir- the Shirley Farms Petting Zoo around 445. They have a camel at Grant's Farm in St. Louis, and they let the kids sit on it for a picture. It doesn't look violent. I let my nieces get on it. I should have thought about it, right? I didn't think about it. When the deputies around arrived, they found the two unconscious victims and the unhinged creature on the loose. Several agencies were on the scene to provide aid and get the victim to safety. Well, the camel probably thinks, where the fuck am I? I'm not supposed to be in Tennessee. There's no camels here. As deputies moved on and one of the victims moved one of the victims into an ambulance, the camel reappeared and attacked a sheriff's office vehicle. What? Wow. Officers were forced to put it down. Um, it's not here clear how the camel got loose. Wow. They said the two men had been at the farm and tried to help capture the animal. The animal cornered them, attacked them, stopping the men to death. A camel expert said that who knew? The animals have enough strength to crush arms and legs while with your neck while kicking forward and backwards. Most animals can only kick backwards. Camels can do a combination of those things all while kneeling forward to crush you. That's Holy shit. That's crazy. Does, does Grant's farm in St. Louis know about that? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it just stood there. The camel there where they, you put your kid on it and you get a picture. Yeah. Whatever. And it's too bad for those guys that are trying to be nice. I'm just saying, I don't know about all these petting zoos, these wild animal sanctuaries. Every every once a month on this podcast, something else has gotten out. And nobody can find it or control it. And it's something that's not... Okay, this is my favorite story of the year. Of the year. Have you ever uh, gone to a petting zoo? A petting zoo? Uh, yeah. I've been to a million of them. So, like that one? Where you drive your car through? Mm. Yes, where you drive your car through. Yeah. yeah, but that's not where you really don't pet them. You're not supposed to roll down your windows, but the foreigners always do. It's like they can't read. Because <laughs> totally. my mom will go, look at that asshole. Look at that asshole. I hope I hope she gets eaten. Oh, mom. We're not here to watch people die, mom. Bring it down. Well, God damn it. This is what the sign says. All right. <laughs> this is the greatest story, animal story of all time. Really? Yes. Because who knew? And now I'm going to have to get one. Yep. Hamsters can drink the equivalent of 21 bottles of wine in a day. (laughs) They are little drunks. And then the Atlantic said, you have no idea how hard it is to get a hamster drunk. And then this critter in the animal kingdom's heaviest alcohol, alcohol drinker. Now check this out. This, they love Everclear. They prefer it over beer. These people, you guess. Um, Alabama. Who does the weird experiments? Alaska. <laughs> Bored. Yeah. Bored. Yeah. Go it's cold. too cold up there. Uh-huh. I could see it happening. We got a bunch of hamsters in the cage. What do you see if we get them drunk? <laughs> it's too cold to go outside and do anything. <laughs> the heaviest drinkers in the animal kingdom are punier than you might expect. Elephants, for example, are massive, but they're relative lightweights. They lack a gene for alcohol metabolism. Humans actually rank pretty highly, thanks to our ancestors' propensities for picking fermented fruit off the ground. But to find the real champs, you have to think smaller. Think hoarder. Think hamster! You just put a bottle of Unsweet Never Clear in the cage and they love it, said Gwen Lufer, a psychologist at the University of Alaska Anchorage who studied alcohol consumption in hamsters. Man, wow. there's another job nobody told me about in the Midwest. Nope. Kathleen, would you like to give <laughs> hamsters different kinds of alcohol every day and see how they yeah, react? Yes. <laughs> they regularly down 18 grams per kilogram of body weight a day. The alcoholic equivalent of a human drinking a liter and a half of 190 proof Everclear. In the wild, hamsters hoard ryegrass seeds and fruit in their burrows, and they eat this fermenting store store as it becomes more and more alcoholic over the winter. So they're even making their own drinks. Wow. That's in the lab, well, they're pretty happy with Everclear. Given the choice between water and alcohol, they go for the booze. Humans have known about hamsters' affinity for alcohol since at least the 50s when scientists in Texas found that hamsters could outdrink the common lab rat. 
Rats can be made to drink alcohol either by selectively breeding genetic lines or by feeding them a mix of sugar and ethanol until they develop a taste for the latter. But with hamsters, you could take a hamster right from the pet store and give it grain alcohol. It would drink it happily. And they can get a lot before drink get, getting drunk. They score the hamsters from zero with no visible wobbling to four with falls onto side and does not write self. Wow. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I write it myself, maybe. Uh, they had previously unsuccessfully tried to track the hamsters <laughs> walking by dipping their paws in watercolor. They couldn't tell the drunk and the sober hamsters' paw prints apart. The hamsters never averaged above .05 on the wobbling scale, even at the highest oral doses. They could still walk a straight line. Um, God. The alcohol goes straight from their gut to their liver, which starts to break down the mind-altering toxin that is ethanol. Hamsters' livers are so efficient, they have great livers. It's too bad you can't breed giant hamsters and then take those livers and give them to people. That's crazy. I mean, all this is nuts. I love it. Well, if Elizabeth Holmes could convince people that she could do what she was doing with no scientific background, why can't I convince people we're going to make giant hamsters? It's true. And transfer livers to people. Yeah. 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 I just need you to give me like a billion dollars. Okay? <laughs> all right? Totally I'm going to get right on it. I already have four hamsters. I've already started. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> They're so efficient at processing ethanol that very little ends up in their blood. When the hamsters get injected with, when they were injected with ethanol, the substance could bypass the liver and go straight into their bloodstream and then their brain, hence much wobbling and falling over. Their alcohol tolerance is likely an adaptation on their hoarding lifestyle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. They're hoarding liquor. Who knew? They don't just tolerate alcohol, though. They prefer it to water. And that might be because they're drinking for the calories. Alcohol has seven calories per, uh, almost as much as fat, uh, which clocks in at nine. Blah, blah, blah. Crazy. I just, I, who knew they're little drunks? This, I, there was too many stories about it. I couldn't <laughs> stop reading them because they all have different information. They prefer to drink 15% ethanol instead of water and can tolerate relatives quantities that would kill a human. Well, we got to make livers like this. Who's smart? Get on it. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else. The wobbling already got that. <laughs> Who knew? I had gerbils. I never had a hamster. So I don't even know what what's, they do. I know what they, how they look different. But what's the difference? The difference between a gerbil and ham. I only know the size. The hamsters are way bigger. Okay. Smaller than a rabbit, but, you know, they love it. They just love it. Um. <laughs> They're and little. They're little lushes. A hamster's a rodent. There was. And a gerbil's a rat. Also what? Yeah. All right. I um. Attempts to get them to de detox with tomato juice, sugar, water, peach, and mango. The fell on its face. They had no interest. <laughs> Um, in 1994, researchers tried to get hamsters to stop drinking by offering them a choice of beer or water per Lawson's tweet stream. However, the attempt backfired after the little after the itty bitty bingers went for the booze with great gusto and were happily chug, chugging along at the equivalent of 90 pints of beer a day for their body size. So you tried to trick them, and they just went for the booze again. You're never going to look at a hamster the same way. I'm not. But now I want to get them, and I want to watch them drink beer. One more Chug beer. One more thing to... Yeah. Just watch them. Yeah. They'll go, if they go that crazy. Here we go. Tell me, tell me how you do this, people. U.S. border fine officials... My friend Drew sent me this one. U.S. border officials find 52 live lizards and snakes hidden in truck drivers' clothing in California. Yep. The snake's bad enough for me, but some of them were these horned toads that I think... I, he's smuggling them in. Agents found the reptiles tied up in small bags concealed in the man's jacket, pocket, and groin area. Oh, God. The reptiles found included nine snakes, 43 horned lizards... Some are, which are considered endangered. There's a picture of them, too. 
He's a 30-year-old man. He tried to get past the border agents in California. How did they think to look, though? What would have even possessed you to think? Yeah, I know. I bet that guy's got some horned lizards in his pants. <laughs> Uh, the truck driver, a U.S. citizen, was arrested after he was pulled over for an additional inspection at the San Ysidro border crossing with Mexico. Fine. Right. But still. <sighs> Sydney, a key Customs Border Protection Director of Field Operations, is that the smuggler attempted to deceive officers to bring these animals to the U.S. without taking care of the health and safety of the animals. Smugglers will try everything possible to get their pro- I mean, how much money can be made? I don't know. What kind of snakes are they? Is it cobras and shit where you can charge? What do they charge? Five grand? No Google how much does it cost to buy a cobra. Come on, then I'm going to get weird spam. Well, pe- yeah, you yeah. will get weird spam. Probably. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of animal stuff this week. So if you're not into it, skip on to next week. Um, this? Ranges between ranges. $15 and 1000 Ranges between 15 and 1000 yeah, For a cobra? Yeah. Oh, it should be a lot more. And then people would stop it. And then they'd stop getting loose in neighborhoods where there's children riding around on tiny bikes. If you get it from a breeder versus this man who brought all this shit in illegally, yeah. probably. Well, those are at pet stores, boa constrictors and pythons and shit. Wow. Why are the boots so expensive? Well, paddles, somebody has to kill that snake and make the boot. Okay? You don't just kill the snake, take that, and put it on boots you already own. You have to make the boots. I got me some snake skin. I'm going to get my Gorilla Glue, and I'm going to put it all over my black leather boots. I just got a pop-up. Don't forget to buy the water bowl. Don't forget to buy the water bowl for the Cobra. Oh. Okay, I. this is amazing. Amazing. And you guys are going to want to go see the picture because upon seeing it, I realize I've never seen one in my life. Rare Wolverine sighting in Yellowstone. Really? Yep. Cool. It's bigger than I thought. <laughs> I would have thought it was a bear. A bear? Yeah. Oh my yep. I don't know how tall it is, but this picture, okay. um, a Wolverine was captured on video by a tourist in Yellowstone National Park this week. An impressive feat considering the research survey conducted in the park from 2006 to 2009, only documented seven of them. Oh, in all of Yellowstone. Oh my God. There's seven. Uh, Carl, though, park visitor Carl Kemp, was on a tour through the world's first national park on March 5th when he spotted the wolverine in the middle of the road. The furry animal galloped back and forth in the snow as Kemp and his daughter Maya looked on. The tour guide said, um, these animals are super elusive. Uh... This is this man has been working at Yellowstone for two decades. It's the first time he's ever seen a wolverine wow. in the park. That's yeah, crazy. it's unbelievable that this creature was right in front of us. Despite not being related to wolves, wolverines have a love hate relationship. Wolverines sometimes eat the animal carcasses left over by wolves. However, wolves won't hesitate to kill the mammals when in direct conflict with them. Uh, wolverines prefer a colder climate with temperatures in August reaching no higher than seventy degrees. Huh. Wolverines, well, they're not that big. A baby bear. They weigh between 15 and 40 pounds. They make their homes in the Rockies, Alaska, the Mongolian Mountains, and parts of Russia and Canada. The spe- we don't need to know about the species no. name and all that shit. That's too hard. But you're going to want to just go look at that picture. It's amazing. Upon seeing it. So, 40 pounds? Yeah. That's a small, medium dog. I guess yeah. the picture was just zoomed in. Mustard probably weighs 20. Mustard does not weigh 20. Might, you don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't think so. We're going to stay on animals for a minute. Okay. Now, I love it when people go, well, this is going to happen, but they're not harmful. <laughs> oh, my God. This is a hard percent. This is not an inflammatory publication. Giant spiders expected to drop from the sky across the East Coast this spring. Giant spiders. Oh. They're dropping from the sky. I've heard that. I don't Because they make their own tiny parachutes. Not kidding. I'm not kidding. Come on. I'm not lying. Oh my God. An invasive species of spider the size of a child's hand. Wait do you see the pictures of it. I probably have the size of a eighth grade. Oh, my nieces are taller than me. Yeah. Seventh so grade. You're not five, one, the spider's going to be this big. 
It's expected to colonize the entire East Coast this spring by parachuting down from the sky. Researchers at the University of Georgia announced last week. Large Joro spiders, J-O-R-O. Millions of them are expected to begin ballooning up and down the East Coast as early as May. Researchers have determined that the spiders can tolerate cold weather but are harmless to human beings as their fangs are too small to break human skin. I don't care. No. I'm still going to have a heart attack. <laughs> Especially if I'm just walking along and one parachute's down on my head. Forget it. Right. Get, chop my hair off. I don't care. Cut it. Oh. It's native to Japan, but ben began infiltrating the United States in 2013, concentrating in the southeast, specifically Georgia. Georgia termites, have you seen these things? They're, they're very colorful. Right. They have like skinny legs and like a me, me, medium-sized body, but not like a tarantula with furry legs, but, I mean, the pictures, anyway. Yeah. They fanned out across the state using their webs as tiny, terrifying parachutes to travel in the wind. They're bright yellow, blue, and black, and they can grow up to three inches. They likely travel across the globe in shipping containers. That's why I would never go in a shipping container. God knows what's in that shit. Wait. Similar to the bubonic plague. Their life cycle begins in early spring, and they, and they get big in June, and they're awful, all, often seen in July and August. They're named for the Joroguma, a creature of Japanese folklore that can shapeshift into a woman or a spider before killing its prey. Researchers say there's nothing we can do. They're coming and they're harmless. I say let's pull our researchers and build a dome around Georgia and keep wow. them there. Yeah. You know who would stop it? The cats. I don't know. We need cats. Yeah, they don't like things flying. They don't like things in the air. They're always looking up. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of drunk animals. <laughs> This is only funny because he didn't fly. Okay. If he would have flown, I can't say that it would be. Drunk jet boot blue pilot is removed from the cockpit. He made it to the cockpit before takeoff after being four <laughs> times over the limit. What? Four times over the limit to fly a plane. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um. Wait. Wait to hear how much that. <laughs> this is what. A jet boot pilot was removed from the cockpit. See, you should let the hamster fly. Yeah. Drunk and won't wobble. No problem. Doesn't even need to write itself. <laughs> Just so you get like 50 little hamsters in there. Doesn't even matter if they're Steven. drunk. They're fine. <laughs> a jet blue pilot was removed from the cockpit after taking a breathalyzer minutes before takeoff after blowing four times a limit. After consuming, hold on to this. Maybe he's part, he might be part hamster. He consumed up to 10 tall boys around midnight. No. Who? I know people that can drink beer like they have hollow legs. I, my cousin Mike, my comedian friend Jim McDonald, um, he's a great beer drinker. There are people where their abilities are, and they're never, they don't even gain weight. Like my cousin Mike's probably weighed the same thing since high school. Jim, same thing. Like, but 10 tall boys? I can't even drink one because I drink it too slowly, and then the second half of it's hot. I can do it. It's always gross. You can do it, but that's... I mean, not 10. No. no. James Clift, and he's 52. He's not a youngster. Wow. See, he's been practicing. Yes. In 52 of Orlando, Florida. Four times a day he blew up before an early morning flight at 6.15 a.m. In addition, pilots and crew members are not permitted to consume alcohol within eight hours of their shift. And I know that's the law. But I can tell you from being on the road in many a hotel bar, I wouldn't wouldn't even know their names. Wouldn't say them if I did. But I've seen um, a lot of uh, airline employees closing the bar with me. Oh yeah. But I don't know. Maybe their flight wasn't until noon. That's why you can't judge. You can't be a judge. You termite. We don't know. Nah, right. It's none of my business. I don't care. But I'm always like, wow, look at you guys. Um. He told the cops that he had five or six drinks the night before and he had not been drinking in the morning of the flight. Well, right, sir, but that doesn't matter if you close the bar at 1.30 and your flight's at 6. It's all the same now. Dude. He later corrected himself and said he had up to eight drinks. Okay, well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Wow. An official reportedly overheard Clifton say on the phone that he had 10 22-ounce tall boys and left the restaurant around midnight. 
The actual numbers of beverage the pilot consumed is unclear. Look, nine out of ten drinkers are going to lie. Smokers, too. Yeah. How much do you smoke a day? Oh, like ten. Eaters. Yeah. But eaters, yeah. Eaters. Anybody that's doing too much is going to uh-huh. shave off. So if he's voluntarily telling you that he had ten tall boys, I'll, I'll believe him. Yeah. So what if it's more? It's already shocking. It's right. not like he was pulled out of the cockpit. Oh, he was going to go from uh, Buffalo to Fort Lauderdale. Wow. He was visibly tipsy while going through security, prompting TSA to report uh, him to the cops, causing the flight delay for four hours. Oh, and you know those <laughs> Buffalo people were like, I just want to go to Florida. Exactly. What do you mean this jackass is drunk? <laughs> the flight, which was supposed to take off at, uh, at 6.15, arrived in Florida at 1.10. That's fine. The sun's still out at one. He was taken in federal custody and federal authority. He was released to the JetBlue, blah, blah, blah. They have removed him from his duties. Um, yeah, wow. you get... The, oh, but this is... Wow, there's just more drunken things. People are just going psycho. Ten tall boys. I've never heard anything like it. And he admitted it. Well, well first he said he had five to six. Then he said eight. And he goes, ah, maybe it was ten. That's like bragging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Are you part hamster? Yes, people are still drinking like they're in COVID, and they're not. No. But we, go, f- go for you, as Rocky would say. Yeah. This one amazes me. <sighs> We've all seen the picture of Amelia Earhart with her leather helmet, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Her flying helmet. Um, her 1928 flight across the Atlantic, mm-hmm. they sold the leather helmet. How much would you pay for it? You. If and if you if you were rich, oh. five grand. Well, you wouldn't have gotten it. Nope. nope, you'd have been kicked out of the auction for being a hillbilly bidder. <laughs> Eight hundred and twenty-five thousand no, dollars. Someone paid. No way. Yep. No. But what are you gonna do with That's it? Ridiculous. Do people have people that over this much that you can show this shit off in your house? That's ridiculous. I mean, I have road comics that come through. And family. But other than that, like, if it were a party, it's just people from golf, the golf course. Like, I don't understand what you're going to do with it. Or maybe your office. Maybe you put it, if you have a real job, you put it in an office? Yeah, maybe. As a, as a conversation piece? That's or unless you're a collector and you do this shit and you're going to try to flip it. <laughs> <laughs> Wear it. It should be called wear it or flip it. Um, the leather cap. It's wow. it sold at, for eight hundred twenty-five thousand, which is ten times higher than they thought. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was an online auction called Heritage Aux- Auctions, and then it goes into um, and it has her initials in it, so they know it's real. And then there's the the history of the provenance, Provence, 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 the history of the thing. I don't even know what that means. We're gonna talk about just one second because I'm fascinated. I had to call my dad. I don't understand how we can seize all these Russian oligarchs um, ships. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool we can, um, but there. I guess there's all these rules for internet for uh, the waters surrounding certain countries, and that because of the drug trades and illegal things, they can kind of do. My dad said basically they can commandeer any ship, mm-hmm. take it, and you got to prove it's yours to get it back. And if there's any illegal shit on that, or it was found by any means that you gained the ship through illegal means, mm-hmm. they can. Blah, blah, blah. But this is just, this is just, you know, here's where the Russian oligarchs uh, have a problem. Uh The children. They have a real problem because of their children. Not the children, their children. Because their kids are dipshits and post (laughs) every single thing on Instagram. I don't even know about TikTok. I'm not following any oligarch children. But somehow I am on Instagram. I did not ask for it, but they pop up probably because I Google shit like this. I don't know how who's reading my the algorithms, but yeah. if you're that rich and some of it's questionable, uh-huh. st- stop bragging. Yeah. Go enjoy your life. Right. Again, what does my dad say? Shut your goddamn mouth. Exactly. And these kids, though, the children, 
They're posting videos left and right, and these guys are on the run. They're trying to get to waters that aren't NATO controlled waters or where they're going to get caught. They want to get to anything goes waters, and then they can hide without their yacht. Sanctioned billionaire Russian, uh, sanctioned Russian billionaire Alisher Yuzminov's 500 foot long, $6 million mega yacht, one of the biggest in the world, 500 feet long. It's sea. My fishing boat is 16 foot long, so <laughs> I don't even know how many that would be of that. But 100 would be 16. So, five, so 16 times 5. I can't do it. I got lost. I don't lost. even know your math. Wow. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. It's a long-ass boat. Um, one of the biggest in the world. It's seized by German authorities amid the crackdown on Putin's oligarchs. Wow. It was frozen in Germany. It's an estimated value of $600 million. It remains at a shipyard in the northern city of Hamburg, where it had been for a refitting job since last October. But see, I don't... Wow. One of the world's largest yacht by volume and can hold over 100 passengers and crew in 58 cabins. That's almost the size of a Viking river ship cruise. Yeah. Which, huge. by the way, Viking, I think because of Delta, I receive there uh, twice a year in the mail. They have like a... Fancy brochure. brochure of all the, and they have one that goes to Kiev, Odessa. It's the Black Sea. Oh no! I know. Is it canceled? It's horrible. No, it's I don't know. It doesn't say it's canceled. And then there's, there's one through Russia too, a Viking cruise, I, which I think my friends Jeff and Debbie did that one. Yeah, um, that's sad. But um, th I mean. He, he and then my dad said the problem is most of these Russian oligarchs, it's not in their name. It's a hundred different shell corporations. But to unravel all that and to prove that it's really yours, whatever the useman off, mm -hmm. good luck because now you got to prove it's yours. And what you were trying to do is hide that it was yours. <laughs> right. You probably hid it too well. <laughs> now you can't even prove it to yourself. Nope. Yeah, he's pissed. So there's that one. And then the Italians, the Italianos. They seized the world's biggest sailing yacht, sailing yacht A. I don't know. It just says huh. yacht A. As Russian oligarch owner Andriy Melnichenko becomes the latest to be hit by sanctions. Wow. Yep. 470-foot sailing yacht A, which has a price tag of $450 million, has been sequestered in the northern port of Trieste. The yacht has been placed in a special dry dock, which has been empty to prevent the vessel from taking being it taken away. Wow. They're getting them left and right. Go for these guys. There's a few that have made it to the Maldives in questionable places where they can hide. But you know what? You're going to run out of gas and shit. I mean, you can hide it till I guess they think this will be over quickly. I don't know. But I'm kind of fascinated. I'm like, well, can the can Water Patrol do that in, in the Lake of the Ozarks? <laughs> like, can they just get on my boat and take it? Just get it. Or is this like an international thing? Is this not <laughs> local lakes? Could you be on a hill, old Hickory Lake in Tennessee or Lake Lanier or somebody? Just these water patrol people. Probably people I went to high school with. Uh -huh. Kathleen, we need the boat. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> or to say it the way Brian Cox would say it. Fuck off. Fuck off. Um, I did promise you guys this one a while back, and I forgot. So there's linguistic experts, and they figured out who Q was. And Q hasn't posted in a long time now because it's totally busted and all of their shit never came true. The real Q... Come up with some new shit. Uh, yeah, they're going to have to do a whole different... Two teams of linguistic detectives have independently identified the likely authors behind the Q conspiracy theory. Paul Ferber, a South African software developer, and Ron Watkins, a message board operator who's running for Congress as a Republican. Aww. So you want to get out there and back Ron... Oh, my God. Both men deny being Q. They were among the first to draw attention to the, to the writings of Q, a supposed U.S. military insider who began warning anonymous, anonymously in 2017 of a, quote, deep state of Democratic pedophiles, uh, pedophiles and Satan worshipers. Oh, Farber, Ferber, 55, is a f frequent disseminator of American conspiracy theories. Watkins, 34, and his father, Jim, ran the message board 8chan. Remember 8chan? Uh -huh. That's where it all started. Wow. 
Swiss and French experts in linguist linguistics analysis believe Ferber created the first messages and Watkins took over as Q in 2018. Two vocal GOP supporters of the Q theory were elected to Congress in 2020. This is what I'm talking about. We go from Thomas Jefferson to, um, you know, people that are in government are Q people. We've failed. We have failed as a nation. <laughs> we have failed. We have failed. All right, I'm going to save these. I'm going to leave you with something spooky. Oh, yep. The Japanese are super freaked out. Why? Well, I don't. I don't know. Sometimes I believe them. Shit. Japanese one thousand year old quote killing stone said to said to contain an ancient demon cracked open. Japan's 1,000-year-old, quote, killing stone. Killing stone. Killing stone. Oh. Said to contain an ancient demon cracked open. Uh-oh. And what does that do? Releases the demon. Yeah. Follow along, paddles. Well, there's a lot in that sentence. According to the legend, the 1,000-year-old killing stone trapped the spirit of, um, uh, of, male- of a malevolent, malevolent, I can't say that. Um. Being now due to rainwater, the rock is split open. Well, there's been rainwater in the last thousand years, right? Sending believers into a state of frenzy. The legend warned that anyone who comes in contact with the stone will die. The volcanic rock, which is officially called Seso Siki, is rumored to contain <laughs> the, mis- the mythical. Seso-siki. It's supposed to contain the spirit of uh, Tomomo no Me. Known as the nine-tailed fox. It's a lady spirit. It's an a- she's an ancient demon from D- Japanese mythology that took the form of a beautiful woman. The creature was stored to be part of a plot to kill Emperor Toba, ruler of Japan from 1107 to 1123. The volcanic rock was actually a popular tourist attraction located in the mountains and region northern of Toshigi and near Tokyo. The famous region is famous for hot sulfur springs but people are freaked out. According to this folklore, the Killing Stone has earned its name by spewing poisonous gas at people. However, uh, since the rock cap, cap, cracked open, visitors have been fearful for approaching the site. The Japanese can be very superstitious. Yeah. You know what? Why bother? I'm with them. Right. Eh, you know, I'm, it's probably not true, but <laughs> if it is, do I need to go look at the rock and be chased by this lady? No. Some users out of a line have expressed fears that the evil spirit has been unleashed once again. So-and-so on Twitter shared an image. Um, oh, wow. They have drawings of it. The nine-tailed fox. You don't want to... It's a lady. Um, somebody said, I'm really getting scared. Like, we need more shit. Right. You know, the poor Ukraine. You know, Ukraine's getting decimated. Uh... They're trying to figure out why it's split. Here I thought 2022 couldn't get any worse. Now a free Japanese, now a furious Japanese spirit is freed from its, quote, killing stone. <laughs> but another person joked, my guess is the demon's going to look around at 2021, 2022 and want to go back into the rock for another millennium. The Japanese newspaper quoted a tourism official as saying he would like to see the Seso Siki restored to its original form. Hopefully, the rumored demon within the stone would then be restored to its rocky prison. The Killing Stone was registered as a local historical site in 1957 and was also mentioned in Matsu Basho's The Narrow Road to the Deep North. The site has even inspired a no play, a novel, and an anime film. Wow. Ah. Yeah. There you have it. <laughs> as if enough crazy shit hasn't gone on. Now we got spirits coming out of rocks. I have to, I do have a quote to um wait this is good paddles uh-huh. as a Canadian you can be very proud the Canadians um in the Ukraine they there's so many fighters that have shown up they have their own battalion yeah that's right Rock right mm-hmm. so many people make fun of the fact that you guys military is not that big We're small but mighty We're look mighty. so many citizens they had to set up a separate uh, Canadian battalion, the U- uh, Ukrainian government source says. So be proud. And they're also sending a sniper guy, a Canadian guy, 
who on his own was like, I got this. Yeah, and he's a crazy, uh, crazy accurate shooter guy. But I don't know, you know, you'd have to get close to Putin if you're going to try and get him. Um, so, wow, you should see their camo, too. It's all, like, um, tree moss. So, anyway, that's a little shout-out to any Canadian termites. Good for you guys showing up. Um, and that's it. I'm going to read you a quote. Out of Lou's magazine. And then you say, you sound 100 when you're saying that. I know. This is a great pot quote. And it's from Jean-Paul Sartre, quoted in the browser. I have not stopped thinking about this. Like, now I think about it every day because it's just a degree. Three o'clock is always too late or too early for anything you want to do. Yeah. It's yeah. true. It's true. It's too early to start seriously drinking. It's too early to go to bed. We can have a nap. You yeah. can do the siesta thing. Sure. That's a comedian. Most comedians nap between four and five. Yeah. That's our, that's our, um, we voted at the meeting and that's our nap time because we've been up probably since, I don't know, seven. And then you got to stay up till 1230. That's a lot. I like this one too. This is Oscar Wilde. There's no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are written bad. Books are well-written or badly written. That is all. Thanks, Oscar. And maybe everybody out there burning books could just chill your jets and simmer down and stop burning books because we need the books. Um, Three o'clock. Now you're going to think about it. Yeah, Yeah, it's nap time. It's not too early for a nap. No, it's not. Not if you're staying up till one o'clock in the morning. It's perfect. But it made me laugh. Termites, I am off to Atlanta, Cobb Energy Center. Already sold a ton of tickets. Thank you, termites that are coming. There's some left. Um... I like in the balconies, yeah, but apparently there's no bad seat in the house. So, oh, um, even if you're late to that party, uh, Portland, mm-hmm. I see my cousin Tommy, uh, Seattle, um, DC. DC, the Warner, New York Town Hall, New York City. I think my cousin Mary's coming with me. Council Bluffs, Iowa. Boom, a casino. Nice. I'm sure my parents will chase me there, um, there. because they're returning from Florida. Nice. It's coming home from Florida, back to the Midwest. Uh, they love a good casino gig. Um, Iowa City, Des Moines, and Kansas City. Moines, Kansas City mm-hmm. Which will be super fun, because I know a ton of people in Kansas City, and I, I love doing that radio show. There's a radio station in Kansas City. That, most radio stations, not most, but at least half are not fun, as oh. most comedians would tell you. But half, the other half that are fun, are usually super-duper fun. Kansas City has Johnny Dare. I love everybody yeah. on that. I love him. I love the team. I love everybody there. I hate that I just use the word team, but, you know, there's a bunch of them that work. Do they work together to do a good morning show? The morning show. Um, and then I don't know where I'm going. It keeps going all the way through. Yeah. I don't even know. I think July. Oh, I have a weekend off, probably. But it's all been great. Wilmington, Delaware. Very excited. Oh, Wilmington, Delaware. Right. That theater down there is probably the prettiest thing ever. And then that lady that works there is so nice. She's been there for 100 years. She's, got, yeah, she's just a wonderful person. Um, where else? Yeah. You're in Iowa a lot. I am in Iowa a lot. It's yeah. springtime. Where else, the fuck else would you want to be? Hello? Ridgefield, Connecticut. <laughs> Ridgefield, Connecticut. Yeah, that's that gig where you go through a subdivision and then there's a theater. It's very. It's it, it's always like a little bit creepy, but the shows are always great. Uh, yeah, with Kelly McFarland. Santa Barbara, Thousand Oaks, Huntsville. Santa Barbara, Thousand Oaks, Huntsville, Alabama. Denver. Yeah. And then Denver. And then Denver, the special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying Banksy. To... Banksy's there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go see Banksy there. Because yeah. it doesn't say when it's coming to any other place I'll be, but Denver, they, they already got it up. Yep. Went online and got tickets. Very exciting. When I didn't buy the ticket to the dome thing, I called to see if there were any good tickets left, and the lady made me feel really, sh- really like I was a dumb punk. She's like, ma'am, these tours sell out many, many weeks in advance. I'm like, well, you know what? I don't live there. I don't work there. I just want to see his attic. If I can't, I can't. I'm fine. Can I just see the bottom first floor? You don't even know where you're going to be next week. I don't know. I'm so... I, everything's been great, but I, it is confusing. Um... And I'm going to do, um, 
a private show for all the dentists in the world. Fun. They will be fun. Yep. The dentist people are fun. Sometimes corporate gigs aren't the greatest fun, um, but sometimes they're better than regular crowds. It's weird, but it's random, and that's why they always make me nervous. But I won't be nervous because I've already talked to these people, and they seem very nice. All right, termites. That's all I got. So be springtime termites. I like it. Thirsty termites? Mm -hmm. Oh, we ordered a whole other shipment of the long sleeve black. They're all in. And they're all in. Are they up? They're, on the they're up on the website. That is the absolute last one, though, because the lady, Cindy's going to get mad at me if I keep doing that. <laughs> um, and we probably won't do another short sleeve because everybody seems to like the long sleeve ones better, which is fine. Yeah. I can make long, keep making long sleeves. Is that what you termites would prefer? Yeah. Hit me up on YouTube. I read those comments. The white ones Let are me know. The white ones are not sold out. Some sizes are. Large. Large. The mediums yeah. are. Um, I prefer a long sleeve t-shirt, but in the summer, I want a short sleeve. Yeah. All right, termites. I got to take that dog out. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. I think he needs to go outside. And Stevie put her back there, and that's it. Ready?